Palomar Health has some of the best physicians and nursing staff in the nation. And today we were able to provide that level of care to those who needed it most. My heart and the heart of this organization go out to this community. It is our job to take care of them in these kinds of times. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Michael Katz, one of our trauma surgeons. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Michael Katz. I'm the Associate Trauma Director for Palomar Medical Center, as well as the trauma surgeon uh, on call today. Uh, today at approximately 11.45 a.m., we received an initial alert of a patient with a gunshot wound injury. Shortly after that, uh, we were informed that there would be multiple that there would be multiple uh, gunshot wound victims. Uh, we received two males as well as two females uh, here at the hospital. They range in age from one minor uh, to three adults, uh, the oldest being 60 years old. Uh, we, the, the one victim arrived with life-threatening injuries and we did everything that we possibly could, uh, but we were unfortunately unsuccessful and the patient did not survive. Uh, the other three victims are, are doing well uh, with their injuries. Uh, I would like to express my sincerest condolences to not only the victims, the victims' families, uh, and of course everyone who was there at the Chabad today uh, and everyone involved. Can you tell us about the other victims' uh, Yes. Uh, the probably largest, uh, largest injury goes to the rabbi. Uh, the Rabbi Goldstein uh, sustained what is most likely a defensive wound uh, where he has injuries to both index fingers. Um, I spoke with him uh, prior to coming out here. He is actually in surgery right now. He will most likely lose his right index finger uh, and the injury to his left index finger hopefully will not uh, necessitate him having the finger removed. The there was a 34-year-old male who uh, received some shrapnel injury, uh, and the minor also received shrapnel injury to the leg as well as the face. Was the, the minor, was she taken to a Rady Children's? She was initially taken here uh, and evaluated where she was found to have shrapnel in both the leg as well as the face, uh, which we would want to monitor her overnight. Uh, so for monitoring, she is currently being transferred to Rady Children's Hospital. I'm sorry? Are you able to say how old she is? Uh, no, just that she's a minor. And for the, the deceased victim, can you say where that person was shot? Uh, unfortunately, I, I have not spoken with the family to allow privacy release, uh, so I'm not able to speak on the details of, of her uh, gunshot injuries. So the, the three people who were injured during, uh, the survivors, uh, they do not have life-threatening injuries? Uh, no, they do not have life-threatening injuries. Uh, they are all gunshot injuries, uh, the rabbi being to the hands and the other two being shrapnel injuries. Um, but they, I would expect them to make good recoveries. Uh, as I was saying, the rabbi is most likely going to be losing his right index finger. How were they transported? Uh, they were transported by ambulance here. Can you tell us about the emotional state of the rabbi? Uh, the rabbi is uh, appropriately upset. Uh, you know, when I spoke with him, he spoke about how not only in 2019, uh, but on the last day of Passover, uh, to have such a tragedy as this happen in America uh, and in California is unspeakable. Uh, and, and I agree with him. Uh, will, the, will the victims, I'm sorry, the, the survivors, will they all be staying, the, the victims, will they be staying overnight? Uh, the so the minor was transferred to Rady Children's Hospital. Uh, of the two remaining, the rabbi and, and the other gentleman, uh, the other gentleman will most likely at least be staying overnight. Uh, the rabbi, I would think, probably a few days and then home. Can you describe the uh, security measures that are in place right now for the victims, uh, the fact that Sheriff's Department is here? And they, they've got a person assigned to each room? Absolutely. Uh, when I went to speak with each person, uh, there was sheriff, sheriff's deputies in the rooms with them at all times what that's like to have regarding people, why they're there and the comfort that it's caused helping their families? Uh, I, th I think it's um, not only a necessary but an appropriate measure uh, to have armed guards in the room with them, especially in the face of um, 
of a, a anti-Semitic motivated uh, shooting. How are the families um, able to, or where are the families being held and how are they being uh, taken care of? In sure. Uh, the families are obviously distraught, uh, appropriately so. Um, you know, the different family members are, are in different locations. The father of the mi minor is with her. Uh, and then the, the, the extensive family of the deceased, uh, some are here and some I'm sure are back at home. Has the hospital provided any counseling for family members? Yes, uh, we have provided both religious and non-religious support. Uh, you know, one of the things that is important for us as a hospital is to be there not only for the families, but also for the community. Uh, in, in, in such a, a time of such a tragic event, it's important to be a supportive mechanism for, for everyone involved. And again, can you just address the safety measures, describe the safety measures for us that are in place right now? Uh, with regard to the victims? Uh, just the whole scenario. Sure. Uh, as normal, we have our, our normal security uh, here at the hospital, as we always have. Um, one of the things to know is that while mass shootings are rare, gunshot wound victims for us are, are not. This is something that we uh, take care of on a daily basis. Uh, we we are, are here 24-7 to take care of, of those that are injured by all types of trauma, including gunshot wounds, and our security force is part of that, is, is part of keeping us safe here. Uh, and specifically in this, on top of our normal security force, we also have San Diego County Sheriffs. Doctor, to clarify, so the deceased was hit by gunfire rabbi was hit by gunfire. The other two survivors were hit by shrapnel, but not gunshots? Uh, they're, they were hit by shrapnel from, from bullets. Can you describe the bullets? I don't know if you can do that. Can you describe the injuries from the, the type that was used? There are some speculation about the type of weapon used. Um, it would be difficult for me to speculate on the type of weapon as I was not there. Um, that would be that would be difficult for me to do. So would it be accurate to say four people shot? Yes, uh, I, I would say that's accurate, uh, being that we have the deceased who was shot, the rabbi who was shot, and then while the other two received only shrapnel, it was shrapnel from a bullet that was shot. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Did the hospital remove? Have, have you guys removed bullets uh, from from victims? Uh, in general, we we usually. Do not remove bullets. That's more of a, of a theatrical uh, thing, removing bullets from patients. Um, that being said, there was a small piece of shrapnel that was in the miner's hair uh, that was removed and I believe turned over to the sheriff's department. Um, but the idea of going after uh, bullets in patients is, is really more theatric. What was your reaction when you first got word of what happened? Uh, my reaction was twofold. Uh, you know, on a professional side, this is what I do. Um, it, it's very sad. It's something that you hope never has to happen, but that's why we're here. You know, it, it, I, I, I analogize it to the fire department. You know, you never want to have your house catch fire, but you're happy that the fire department's there when they are. Of course, on a personal level, um, anyone sustaining a gunshot wound is, is of course dis distressing uh, and then a mass shooting and then what appears to be an anti-semitic mass shooting uh, you know hits home for me personally sure uh, the there was one minor uh, there is a 34 year old a 57 year old rabbi and then a 60 year old You know, the, the hospital staff is, is obviously shaken as they would be uh, with, with any situation like this. Uh, the hospital is providing, um, uh, is providing support, emotional support for that as well, as well as counseling. Um, because we are a trauma center, these sort of things, which are very dramatic and, and difficult, uh, come to us and, and we have to be strong, but we, of course, appreciate the support that the hospital provides and, and they provide it very well. Doctor, running down the ages again, so the, the deceased is the 60-year-old woman? Correct. And then a 50, the rabbi is 57? Correct. And then a 34-year-old adult male? Yes, 34-year-old adult male and a minor. And a minor female? 
female. Um, not that I know of. Thank you. Thank you.